My name is Tyrone Irvin, and today I am here with Clyde Stewart, the pastor of Westside Christian Center. Westside Christian Center here in San Bernardino, California. Um, the pastor wrote a book, and uh, I was I was looking at some of the excerpts of his book, and I was speaking to him in the past about interviewing interviewing him because I see some of the pastor's comments and some of the things he says, and I say. Pastor is very interesting. Pastor is a person that I would like to speak to and get his perspective on his book, some things that are going on in the world, and just 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 a full on interview. And Pastor said, "Come on down." So, Pastor, it's nice to meet My you. My pleasure. Glad to have you. Glad that you're here. I am glad to be here. So, Pastor, first, where are you from? I'm from San Bernardino, California. Okay. Right where we're sitting. At. The most dangerous city California call in the, in this in the state of California, mm -hmm. and that's where I am. That's what God called me to. That's where I was born, mm -hmm. and I'm here in San Bernardino. Okay, so you chose to stay home. Yes. Okay, what made you decide? Let me stay here in San Bernardino. Okay. Well, at first I decided to leave. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I um when I, when I when I got into um, ministry or became aware that God had a call in my life, mm -hmm. I was going to Crenshaw Christian Center in Los Angeles. Okay. Doctor uh, Frederick Casey Price. Fred Price. Pastor, Fred Price. Evidence. Yeah, evidence. Uh -huh. Yeah. So um, I was driving from Rialto to San Bernardino every Sunday and every Friday okay. for Bible study, and then the Lord called me and I said, "Oh, wonderful! I'm going to be working with Doctor Price." Because uh -huh. my wife and I we were traveling on crusades with him all throughout oh, the country. Wow. Okay. And so um, I was getting a chance to see ministry firsthand, mm -hmm. uh, dealing with other pastors, dealing with uh, different people from different walks of life. Uh -huh. And so I said, well, praise God, I'm going to be here in Los Angeles. Okay. Let's move to Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. And then God called me and he said, no, you're staying in San Bernardino. And I said, well, God, that's a hard play because, mm -hmm. you know, a prophet is not without honor in his own country amongst his own kind. Mm -hmm. And uh, like Jesus, you know, that's why they couldn't receive Jesus too much. Uh -huh. They were too familiar with him. However, mm -hmm. the father said, this is where you're going to be. So this is where I've been. We just celebrated 25 years. 25 years? 25 years. 25 wow. years. So I'm not a novice. I didn't just show up. Uh -huh. uh, and, you know, I'm not wet behind the ears anymore. Uh -huh. I've been through some things, seen some things, experienced some mm -hmm. things. So after that silver anniversary, mm -hmm. God's blessed me and, and it has taken care of us. 25, 25 years. 25 years. That's, that's, that's a long time, yeah. especially being here. On, and we're on the west side of yeah. San Bernardino. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm, I'm from this area. Okay. I'm not far from here. Okay. And so, being a pastor in this area, why do you feel like, why did God call you here? And what is, the, and what is your biggest need of the people here? Why do you feel like this is the place for you? Well, he called me here, and the reason I'm here is because he gave me a heart for this place. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I, I wanted to leave and I tried to leave. Mm -hmm. But because of my experience here mm -hmm. and my, my heart is here. Mm -hmm. So since my heart is here, I really can't leave. And so I, I see the needs. I, I grew up here in the 70s. Mm -hmm. I, I've seen the shootings. I, I've seen the heroin addicts back, back in the 70s when that was large. The prostitution, the poverty, the shootings. Mm -hmm. And um, it's always been going on. Mm -hmm. there, there's a wicked spirit that's been over San Bernardino. Okay. That wicked spirit that's been dominating this area with this darkness. Mm -hmm. You know, these murders, uh, going to prison, mm -hmm. uh, fatherlessness. Um, uh, pregnancy, I, I've seen it, you know, mm -hmm. for decades. Mm -hmm. And so I'm, I'm here to pray it out, teach it out, mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. show an example on, on getting out. Because I could have felt pray to it just like my, just like my yeah. friends did, just like family members did. Mm -hmm. But God had a call in my life. I believed him. Mm -hmm. He's provided for me. He's been proof of him calling me mm -hmm. and taking care of me, me and the ministry here. So I, I have a heart for this place. I can't leave. And I, I see the, the, the poverty, the hurt, the darkness here, the sin here. Mm -hmm. And so my calling is bring is bring light to it. Okay, what is your role in the community? Well, in the community, we, we're doing several things. Have been doing several things. I um, was all, was always working with teenagers. Mm -hmm. um, I was working in the penitentiary. I was a parole agent. Okay. I had a caseload of, of uh, young men who were um, coming from juvenile probation, mm -hmm. juvenile camps, and now here they are in the penitentiary. Okay. So I said, you know, why why is this happening? Why why didn't something stop them before they got to this point? Mm -hmm. And that's when God spoke to my heart, open up Stewart's home for boys. So we had boys' homes for 12 years. Wow. I dealt with over 560 juvenile offenders. Wow. And some went to prison, some didn't. Some mm -hmm. still in contact with me today. So um, I had the boys' homes for 12 years. Mm -hmm. I, I'm trying to teach them how to, how to stay out of prison, how to be productive, mm -hmm. black men. The mm -hmm. majority of them were, were, were gang bangers, mm -hmm. but, uh, black, little black boys, young boys to mm -hmm. me. And um, so I, I was teaching them on that level. I found out that something was lacking in the sense that I could teach them all day long. I'm mm -hmm. sending them back home. Mm -hmm. 
I could give them some new skills, right. I could give them some new insight, but they're going back home to the hood, right. a household with a mother or a grandmother. And so I said, well, I got to do something to reach the parents. Oh, I got to wow. talk to the So to you the, went a step beyond. I went a step beyond. Instead of just with the children. Just with the kids. Wow. And that's, that's, how, that's, that's how Westside Christian Center came into play, okay. that I could get the parents in here. I can't get them in the boys' home, uh -huh. but I can get them in the, in the setting of ministry wow. and, and teach them from that perspective. Wow. And then there's just bringing the family together is yeah. teaching in the family aspect at that point yes. because you have the, the home, mm -hmm. the, the parents, and you have the children. Yes. Wow, that's that's great. Sorry. That's that's smart too. Yeah, that God, God came up with that idea, not me. Well, God gives good ideas. <laughs> yes, He does. To good people. He's full of it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Full. Earlier, you mentioned something about fatherlessness. Yes. And and that's something that's ran rampant mm -hmm. over our community. Mm -hmm. And you have wrote a book. Yes. So let's talk a little bit about your book. Okay. With them, your book, Life Without the Father. Um, it's a, it's kind of autobiography plus based on my experience with growing mm -hmm. up without a dad myself. Mm -hmm. Now I grew up uh, on the west side of San Bernardino. Mm -hmm. I had um, one neighbor, I had two neighbors that had fathers. Wow. Um, and uh, all the rest were fatherless. Uh -huh. And so, um, I, I you know, when my father left when I was eight years old, I remember him driving off the driveway and mm -hmm. I'm looking at him leave and wondering what's going on. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, life goes on, you grow and you go and you experience life. Mm -hmm. And I seen what that did to my older brother. I seen what it did to the other, other mm -hmm. guys in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And um, I always said to myself as a, as a young, little boy, young boy, if I have a family, I'm never gonna leave my kids. Okay. I'm never gonna leave my family. I'm gonna be there for my children. Mm -hmm. Oh, I said that to myself as a child. Mm -hmm. And so when I grew up and, and um, became a, a man, had my, my, my children, my two kids, I had two kids. Um, I made sure that I was there for them. Okay. Um, one of our members who go here, who grew up with my son, he says he remembers seeing me, mm -hmm. um, you know, dealing with my son Anthony. You mm -hmm. know, they played football together. And he said the one thing he saw about me, which I didn't know at the time, nobody was looking or even taking note, that um, I was consistent. Okay. I was at all his practices, I'd bring him, pick him up, mm -hmm. go to his games, interact. You know, I was there. Yeah. And he said his dad wasn't. And that's what impressed him to be a, father, a better father, is that he remembers Mr. Stewart was there and consistent. Uh -huh. And so that's what, that's what kids need. Yes, they need, some consistency. they need some consistency. And and you gave him a good example uh -huh. of consistency mm -hmm. by him being able yeah. to see you consistently mm -hmm. there. In the book, I noticed you used, you took and you incorporated the Bible yeah. with, with real life instances. Mm -hmm. What gave you the inspiration for the verses that you pulled for for the examples that you gave in the book? Okay, first of all, there's no better father than God. Okay. All right. Um, there's no better example of a father mm -hmm. than God. When the earth was first made, uh, he created the earth. It was The Bible says it was chaotic, mm -hmm. and there was um, chaos on the face of the, uh, the deep, and uh, the earth was not... It was void. It wasn't mm -hmm. livable. Mm -hmm. So God made the earth livable. The Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters and everything came into to, um, balance like it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And then he made man in his image and his likeness. So he got, God's got, God got his household together first, uh -huh. made it habitable. So you're not ready to be a father if you don't have a place for your children to live that's going to be habitable, that's going to be productive for them, that's going to cause them to have life. Right. So God took the earth realm and made it livable for Adam. And so uh, a man has to be, he has to, have his, he has to have a skill, he has to have some maturity about himself, he mm -hmm. has to have some finances, and he has to have a place that's livable where kids can thrive. Mm -hmm. So he made the earth realm and made it where Adam could thrive. So um, I, I get my example of a father from, from, from the Father God, because mm -hmm. he said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's one thing that fathers do in the earth realm, they leave their kids and forsake them. Mm -hmm. And they have that orphan spirit. Right. That orphan spirit will damage a child. Okay. I've seen so many um, young men with, with that hole in their heart, uh -huh. looking for their dad, wanting for their dad. Mm -hmm. you know, girls, a longing girls for it. something yeah. that's not yes, there. That's not there. Mm -hmm. and, and not feeling that they were, they were good enough or worthy enough for that person to stay there and mm -hmm. see them through. Okay. I call fathers escorts. Wow. See, a, a child hasn't been this way before. Mm -hmm. I, I, the, the path I was taking as a young, young boy, a, a teenager, and then young man, I hadn't walked that before, but another man had, mm -hmm. who could have gave me some insight and some, some um, direction. See, God gives us insight and direction on how not to be failures. Mm -hmm. He told Joshua that if you meditate on my word day and night, you'll have, you'll, you'll, your way will prosper and you'll have good success. See, a lot of people have success, but it's, it's the good success you want. Mm -hmm. Just having money don't make you successful. Just being a businessman, right. just, just um, getting married don't make you successful. Mm -hmm. You want that good success. And, the, and God the Father 
through his word and through his help and his guidance, he guides you into being successful. Mm -hmm. And so um, the fathers are here to escort their children. We're, 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 their, we're their protectors. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a Hebrew word, pater, P-A-T-E-R. That's what, that's what a father is. And it calls the father a nourisher. See, in the English world, in the Western world, we think the mother is the nourisher. Yeah, that's what, yeah. That's what I've been familiarized yeah. Yeah. with, yeah. is the mother is the nourisher. Yeah. We're to one, that word nourish means to give somebody strength. Okay. You know, when a mother's nursing a baby, uh -huh. she's giving, giving them that the milk. strength through yeah. the food. But that man uh -huh. gives them the strength to be who they're supposed to be. Okay. That strength to, to stand up for what they've been taught. I remember a lot, a lot the of- The inner strength. The inner strength. That, that's the nourisher. Mm -hmm. My son, I remember my son telling me, he'd be around his friends, they were smoking marijuana, they were drinking, doing this or that. Mm -hmm. And he was saying, he said he would tell them, you guys can do what you want to do. Mm -hmm. I'm not going home smelling like weed. I'm not uh -huh. going home smelling like I've been drinking. And my son said, I'd fight any one, any one of them before I'd fight you. <laughs> okay? So uh, in the, not, not in the sense that I was mean or, um, or, or didn't let him live and experience life as a, as a child and a teenager, but he knew there'd be consequences. Yes. He knew he was got the answer to a man. Right. And not to diminish women, but there's no way that a woman can teach a boy to be a man, mm -hmm. just like there's no way that a man can teach a girl to be a woman, to be a yeah, mother. Right. I've heard that, somebody tell me you can't take somebody somewhere that you've never no, been. And that you don't fully understand. I don't mm -hmm. fully understand. You know, my wife and I, we've been married uh, 47 years. I don't, I don't fully understand what it takes to be a woman. I got a good idea. Mm -hmm. I've been around it, but there's no way I'm going to ever be able to walk in those shoes. Right. Right. And I'm not called to walk in those shoes. Right. And I'm called to walk in you know, what a man's called to do. Right. And that's to be that nourisher, that protector, that provider. Okay. And so that's what I endeavor to be because that's, that's what kids need. And, and that gives them security. When a child is secure, mm -hmm. they're able to stand on their own. The followers and the ones that wind up in trouble and, and, and doing things based on peer pressure, mm -hmm. um, that's because they didn't have enough inner strength to stand. Right. And, then, and a lot of them... They're not getting that example. Exactly, that man. They're not, and and I've learned something new that a man can be a nourisher. Yes. So I do nourish my children yes, you do. because fundamentally, what you hear is like I said earlier is just the mothers give the nourishment. Mm -hmm. So now, like I said, I know something new that we give the nourishment. Yes. We nourish them on how to, the inner strength, the, inner strength. the intestinal yeah. fortitude. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Okay, Pastor. Um, what's your favorite part of the book? Oh wow. Mm -hmm. Lately, I've fallen in love with the Gospels. Um, the, the way I was brought up, spiritually speaking, um, I was brought up in what they call the faith movement, the prosperity movement. And, and that's what, that was my foundation, my beginning, and that's what I, I majored on in the, in the beginning of my ministry and my life. Mm -hmm. um, but, but since that time, I fall in love with the Gospels because the Gospels is all about what Jesus said, mm -hmm. what Jesus did, and what Jesus promised. Mm -hmm. And um, th those Gospels, you, you, it's so much... It's so much revelation and, and, and richness in those Gospels mm -hmm. following Yeshua, our, our, our Lord and Savior, mm -hmm. how he did it. Yeshua, Jesus, he's the best example of a believer. Mm -hmm. See, he's a, he, he was a believer. Mm -hmm. He was the first believer, the firstborn from the dead. Yeah. He's the best example. So praise God for the Apostle Paul. Praise God for the other apostles. But I can learn so much more. From Yeshua, the, the original, from the pattern, he's the pattern. So the, I fall in love with the Gospels here recently. Um, I'm always in the book of Psalms, book of Proverbs, wisdom. Mm -hmm. um, but um, I've kind of fallen in love with the Gospels recently because I'm, I'm following Christ. Okay, and the, the Gospels are the word of Jesus himself. Yeah, yeah. The, gospels, the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are the accounts, the recorded accounts from Matthew's perspective, mm -hmm. Mark, Luke, and John's perspective and experience mm -hmm. recorded. They recorded, they had scribes record these, these, uh, these, um, these events, these happenings, these experiences. And if you were to go with me, if you and I were to go to, to the same place and we saw an event, we saw something happen, I would put it in, I wrote it down to put it in my words, you wrote it down to put it in your words. Mm -hmm. It would have the meat of the event, Mm -hmm. But would they, it would have something personal to me, something mm -hmm. personal to you. So those guys, that those four, uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they gave it from their perspective um, and, and, and based on the experience and everything they saw. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, I, 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 I take each one into account. They don't contradict themselves. People say the Bible contradicts itself, but they haven't studied the Bible. They just read it. Mm -hmm. And so from those guys' perspective, I just draw from each one and, and, and get something 
from, from how they saw it and the way they experienced it. Okay. Okay, Pastor. If you could give your book to anybody, a core constituency of people, when you were writing the book, who did you feel needed the book the most? Oh, I, I, was, I was writing that book to black men. Okay. I was writing that book to black men. All, all men, but black men first. And I'm not um, leaning or being prejudiced or what have you, because the Apostle Paul said his first love was Israel. His, mm -hmm. Paul, being a uh, Hebrew or Jew himself, he said his, his, his desire and his prayer was that Israel would be saved. Mm -hmm. he, wanted, he was sent to the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. He was sent to the non-Jewish people. Mm -hmm. But his heart was for his people. Jews. His right. people. You know, but he was sent to the Gentiles and he did what God told him to do. And, and my heart is for black men, but I'm still ministering to anybody and everybody. But I, my, my experience has been the downfall of black men, the downfall of, of, of black children, and the downfall of the black home. And so that, that's where my heart is. But I'm a, I love everybody. I'm a preacher to everybody. Um, but that's where my heart is. Black that's, men need that book. That's who you, the book is for. Yeah. Black men it, need it's that for book. It's for everybody. For everybody. But in hopes that yeah. it reaches black men yes. because it's covering things from your experience exactly. as, as a, a black, black man. man. In the hood. In the ghetto. Mm -hmm. um, but God is good in the hood. And so he'll it's take care of you. It's all good in the hood. God take, is good in the hood. He'll take care of you in the hood. And um, those ills, those problems, those, those dilemmas are in the ghetto, in the hood. Mm -hmm. You know, now, people that are of means and in, in the suburbs, they, they have marital problems, they're having divorces, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. But we, we got the whole thing in the hood, all of it, mm -hmm. with, along with the poverty. Mm -hmm. so, um, so if anybody needs that, that book, anybody needs to, to get that wisdom on that book mm -hmm. and see the impact. See, you know, all these men running around here having children and leaving them and, and you, the baby's mama syndrome, mm -hmm. that, was, that, that was from the pit of hell. That's the worst thing that could have came up, mm -hmm. of being a baby's mama or a baby's daddy. Um, you're a father or a mother. Mm -hmm. You know, you, men, men are dispersing seed in the earth realm. Mm -hmm. Seed produces something. Mm -hmm. He told us that in Genesis. As long as the earth remains, there's going to be seed, time, and harvest. Meaning that a seed, given enough time, is going to produce a harvest. Mm -hmm. And we've had many men dispersing seed. Time has gone by, and the harvest is black men in prison. Mm -hmm. The harvest is drug addiction. The harvest is having babies. The harvest is that cycle, that iniquity, mm -hmm. that cycle of poverty and that curse perpetuating itself, going on and on. Like I said, I'm 64 years old. Mm -hmm. I've seen what, what happens from the 70s to this point. And really nothing has changed. Mm -hmm. Nothing's changed. Mm -hmm. It's still going on. It's still happening. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of it due to a, a lack of nurturing that seed yeah. from the father. Not, not taking care of the seed. Mm -hmm. I have a chapter in my book that, okay, you, a man is, is a, the seed giver. And so he's, he's dispensing the seed. And so he has a garden. Mm -hmm. And the garden ain't being kept. And so it's just growing wild. Yes, yeah, so you see a garden and, and or yard, whatever you want, uh, on a, uh, a field, and it's seed out there. It's growing weeds. Mm -hmm. It might be growing some beautiful flowers. It might be growing trees. But um, if it isn't tend to, it if, it's, if it isn't cared for, uh -huh. the, the it's not going to produce what it's supposed to. And yeah. men are dispersing seeds in the earth on black men, and you see the the results of, of not taking care of your seed, mm -hmm. and you see the harvest. Like I said, I worked, in the, I worked in the prisons in the California Department of Corrections from 76 to 83 when I started the boys' homes. And um, my units were full of black men. Mm -hmm. my, the units were full of black men, just, and just like today. Mm -hmm. um, and and so, so nothing's changed in that regard. There's still men not taking care of that seed. And I, you talk to any of the inmates. You do a poll. Did you have a father? Did, did anybody raise you? No. Yes. And you got generations in there. You got sons, fathers, and grandfathers. Like I, got, I know somebody now that works in the penitentiary, and he said he's got grandfathers on the unit. Wow. With the fathers and the sons. Wow. All on the same on the same unit. Same unit. You know, wow. You know, everything. Every seed reproduces after its own kind. Mm -hmm. And when the when a regular man is producing a seed after him and he doesn't get have his life together. Now there's some there's some exceptions. There's not hundred percent. There's some some people that, that come out that mm -hmm. you know get out. Yeah. And, but there's, there's always some there's some. always an outlier yeah. who makes yeah. it. But it's a higher number that mm -hmm. don't that don't. And so everything reproduces after its own kind. So I didn't want my son, I got a grandson now. I, I didn't want my son to reproduce what what I had initially started doing and then what my father had did and then I got a grandson. There's four generations right there. Mm -hmm. 
And, and so the curse will stop with my son as far as divorce, mm -hmm. as far as not raising your child, as far as not mm -hmm. being a father, a nourisher. Mm -hmm. And so he's taking excellent care of his two children. Okay. And he, he attributes it to what he got out of me. Okay. You know, he said, um, I remember I got my son's first pair of Air Jordans. Uh -huh. And he was so happy and showed his buddies in the neighborhood. But he said, as he grew up, um, he don't remember the Air Jordans. He remember he and, I, he and I going fishing one time. Now I'm not an outdoors guy, but he wanted uh -huh. to go fishing. So we went to Silverwood and spent the night and fished and, you know, mm -hmm. and, and um, he fell in the lake trying to get this line out this tree. Do you remember that incident? He said the Air Jordans didn't mean anything to him. Uh -huh. But that time was just me and I. Yes. So buying your kids some, some Air Jordans, buying them a car, whatever, mm -hmm. you know, throwing some money at them. Mm -hmm. A lot of parents were working two jobs, not spending time with the kids, but the kids got iPhones and they got, you know, shoes and stuff. Right. But they don't have you and your time. The most expensive thing you got in the earth realm is time. Mm -hmm. The Bible calls it valuable and precious. You can't purchase any. Okay. There's nothing you can purchase. So when your kids got your time, when your husband or wife gets the time from their spouse, mm -hmm. you're letting them know, I'm giving you the most valuable thing that I have. Because mm -hmm. we all got a limited amount of it. Yeah. And how you, how you decide to spend it. Mm -hmm. You spend time just like you do money. Yes. Well, you invest time just like you do money. And you invest your time in the things that's not going to give you a return. You wasted your time. Right. I've never, I've never um, equated. I've heard the term time is money, mm -hmm. but the way that you just broke it down mm -hmm. so finite to where that does make sense. Mm -hmm. Time is very valuable mm -hmm. and everybody runs on time. Mm -hmm. Somebody might say you have 10 minutes. Yeah. You really have 10 minutes. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and spend, you know, who am I going to spend, spend my time spend with? Spend my time with, exactly. You, it's commerce. Right. It's commerce in the, in the form of this most valuable commodity mm -hmm. called time. Can't borrow any, can't purchase any, can't, can't charge any, can't give any. Mm -hmm. You know, um, we're talking about we give people our time. Well, I'm giving you my time, but, but mm -hmm. you know, I got to make the decision to give it to you. Mm -hmm. You ain't really getting it. You're getting this piece of my, um, this moment with me, but I, I can't really give it, give it away as it were. Bill Gates, I guess, I don't know if he's still the richest man in the, in the world, but as rich as he is, guess how much time he could buy? None. Zero. And and the time is still valuable. And it's still valuable. It's still valuable. Everybody, every every person in on the planet, rich, poor, time whatever, is valuable. Time is valuable. And everybody got a certain amount of it, and we all we all get to do, choose what we're gonna do. With time it. sees no class. None, no color. No color. No nothing. No anything. None of that. Okay, okay, Pastor. And look, I wanted to ask you some other questions too. Um, I do, a, I do a podcast, I do a show, and yeah, I get a wide array of different people mm -hmm. who believe different things. Yes. And so I wanted to sit down and ask you, Pastor, what about, there's so many people that are saying they're getting disillusioned with the Christian church. Mm -hmm. What's going on? Why are all these people getting so disillusioned with the Christian mm -hmm. church? And, and you as a pastor, how did that make you feel mm -hmm. and think? And what do you grab somebody yeah. and tell them? Okay. Well, you know, that could, that could be twofold. Mm -hmm. Number one is definitely spiritual, number one, mm -hmm. um, because we have an enemy, a spiritual enemy that comes against the gospel, that comes against the truth, that comes against the light. Mm -hmm. And so when, pe when, when, the, when, when, that, when that spiritual force, that's, that force of darkness, when it could get in the pulpit mm -hmm. and get that shepherd to mm -hmm. do something apart from the word of God, apart from the call of God, mm -hmm. the people are going to be disillusioned. They're not going to be fed. Mm -hmm. See, if you find a good restaurant. Mm -hmm. You know, a good restaurant? You can keep going. My, you can keep going. My wife and I uh, got a restaurant in L.A. we like. I'm not going to call the name out because they ain't going to give me no uh, <laughs> decision on it. But, but, you know, they don't, they don't have to call me and ask me to come. Uh -huh. I, I'm going to come. Uh -huh. I'm going to come. It's a good meal. Mm -hmm. If the pastor is feeding, Jesus told Peter, feed my sheep and feed my lambs. Mm -hmm. And if a pastor has the right meal mm -hmm. for the flock, they going to come. Um, pastors are entertaining now. Mm -hmm. Pastors are being influenced by politics. Mm -hmm. Pastors are being influenced by society, mm -hmm. by education. They're being influenced by all these outside forces. And a lot of pastors are trying to fit in into what society is doing. Okay. And a real sheep, a real lamb of the Lord Jesus Christ, they're going to know and recognize, if not overtly, but by the spirit, something's wrong. Something's wrong. Mm -hmm. and, and since the church has gotten away from its first love, Preaching and teaching the gospel, preaching and teaching the word of God, being led by the spirit of God. Mm -hmm. Having this place here, a place uh, uh, where, where, where the Holy Spirit can, can be free to move upon the people and minister to them. 
If that's not going on, they're not going to come. They're not going to stay. Mm -hmm. they, they, they don't like the rest. The restaurant's not feeding them. Right. They're not growing. When you eat, you're supposed to grow. When you eat, you're supposed to have some productivity. Mm -hmm. And I believe that the shepherds have gotten too much, too caught up in what's going on in society, what's going on in politics. I'm going to say something very unpopular here right now. And um, I'm back on the political arena. The mm -hmm. Bible tells us to pray for those who are in leadership. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't like Donald Trump. A lot of people got a lot of negative things to say about him. And a lot of it may be true. Mm -hmm. However, the Bible was true before Donald Trump showed up. Mm -hmm. And I know many pastors and many believers that literally hate him, talk down about him. Mm -hmm. But the, the higher, and, and it, may be a, it, it may be some truth to what they say, mm -hmm. but a higher truth is pray for those who are in leadership. Mm -hmm. And that's because that's what the Bible that's says. That's what the word do. says to do. That's mm -hmm. what God's going to honor. Mm -hmm. See, God's not going to honor a person or a man. He ain't going to honor Donald Trump, but he's going to honor what he said to do. Mm -hmm. And so I'm not going to get no political stance and try to be popular or fit in with a, a People just assume that I hate the president that's in there right now. They just assume that. Mm -hmm. And I had to straighten him out sometime. I'm praying for him. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm here. My kids is here. My grandkids is here. My friends are here. My family's here. I don't want him to fail. Mm hmm I don't want nothing crazy mm -hmm. going on in America. Mm -hmm. and we live here. And you're doing what the Bible says to do. All day long, the, the most every day. Importantly. And that's because that, that's all that's going to matter. Mm -hmm. Everything else is going to... He may do a second term, he may not. So he'll be gone in a couple of years. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to disobey God for four years because it's popular to disrespect him. It's popular to talk down about him because, because that's what everybody else is doing. Mm -hmm. You know, I've never been a follower. I'm not going to be a follower. And I, I'm going to follow Jesus mm -hmm. and I'm going to do what the word says to do. And it says to, to pray for those in leadership. Something else is going to shock people. I've said this in, behind closed doors, so to speak, with other people. I believe God placed that man in that position right now. Mm -hmm. so I believe God placed that man in that position right now. God, is, God put Donald Trump. Yeah. And see, not because he's special, mm -hmm. but, because, but because of what he was going to do. Mm -hmm. Because not, the result of yes, what happened of what, after yeah. his election. All that. The things all that, that come after it. Yeah. You know, the board says that anything that can be shaken will be shaken. America, since that man got in there, everything got shaken up. Everything has changed. Mm -hmm. Every, everybody is on pins and needles. Because, mm -hmm. see, I teach about these seven mountains in, in the earth realm. Mm -hmm. You know, you have family, you have religion, you have politics, you have education, you have the arts, you have business and commerce. Mm -hmm. And those seven mountains, those seven pillars, are ran by a demonic force. Mm -hmm. And Donald Trump crossed over from the business arena mm -hmm. to the political arena. And you've seen all hell break loose because it has brought confusion to the political arena, uh -huh. it's brought confusion in society, mm -hmm. it's brought confusion in family, and Satan is the god of this world and he wants to keep those pillars separate and those demonic forces over them functioning the way they're supposed to so things don't get crossed up. So the shaking won't go on. He is shaking up everything. Not that he's special. I'm not exalting him as a person or a man. You're just talking about the ramifications of what's happening. What's happening. You're not talking about him as an person, individual. Yes, it, not lifting him up. Mm -hmm. And people can see all this shaking going on. People mm -hmm. can see what's happened since he's been Oh yeah, there. look around. I mean, just what he's done with Israel, recognizing Israel. Mm -hmm. No other American president has ever done that. It, well, they pr they promised it, they but they've never it. done it. They didn't have the heart to do it. Mm -hmm. See, one thing about Donald Trump is, he don't have enough political sense. Mm -hmm. He don't have the political sense <laughs> to do what he's supposed to do. Mm -hmm. He's looking at it purely from a business perspective and a common sense perspective. Mm -hmm. And and you're supposed to do it from a political perspective. Mm -hmm. Okay? And he's not doing it. And he's bringing confusion to that mm -hmm. arena and the enemy don't like it. Again, I think God put him in that position for a specific reason, and we shall see. Mm -hmm. And we shall see. Yeah, we don't know exactly why, but there's a reason. Yeah. And again, you're not saying that you're saying he's the most wonderful no. person in the no. world, but you're saying there's a reason for this. Yes. And whenever, and when God does something for, uh, whenever God does something, there's there's a, a huge principle and a huge reason behind it, and there's a plan behind it. Mm -hmm. And I think believe, believers have got. Here's another thing with the pastors and the other and believers as a whole. They start mm -hmm. looking at things through natural eyes, and we're supposed to look at all this mm -hmm. through spiritual eyes. Mm -hmm. I'm in a natural body, but I've been born from above. I'm supposed to, I'm supposed to have a, pers a spiritual perspective on things first. Okay. I see a red light, I know I'm supposed to stop. I ain't got to pray about that. Mm -hmm. I see the speed limit, I know the speed limit. I don't have to pray about that. Mm -hmm. But all the other things going on in the earth realm, in the world, I'm supposed to be discerning them spiritually. Mm -hmm. Not politically, mm -hmm. not socially, but spiritually. Right. 
Right. You're supposed to take it and, and discern things through the spirit that, that was given to Amen. you. Amen. Okay. Pastor, let me ask you this. Far as what is the I asked you earlier about the pastor's responsibility. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna come to it back again. I'm gonna reiterate on it just a little bit. I, I like these are things that come to me a lot, and I get asked a lot. People say, "Well, pastors are out here just doing whatever they want to do, mm -hmm. and it gives a bad example." So I don't want to go to mm -hmm. church. How prevalent is is that? And what would you say to people who feel like mm -hmm. that? Because I've come to realize, mm -hmm. in speaking to pastors like you, that. This isn't something that's every single pastor, mm -hmm. but my dad told me that, you know, bad examples, one bad thing mm -hmm. will mess up 20 good things yeah. you do. Mm -hmm. So what is that dynamic and what would you say to people who feel like they've been scarred because they've seen yeah. something? Yeah, um, it's just like not only the pastor, but somebody in the pew. I've had people leave church because somebody in the pew or in the usher was mean to them. Mm -hmm. Didn't let them sit where they want to sit, mm -hmm. um, was, was rude to them in their opinion and they left because of that person mm -hmm. they were here they loved the word i was teaching they loved me i never offended them but they left because of somebody else mm -hmm. same thing with the pastor um in a, on a different level so people will leave based on an experience a negative experience with someone else mm -hmm. but if god called you to a place mm -hmm. it, it doesn't matter what happens to you at that place and, and it, but if god called you there god's gonna provide for you there and he wants you to get something from there my wife and I had a bad experience when we were going to church sitting in the pew. It was a money thing. We, we loaned somebody some money and they didn't pay us back. And it never came into my mind or my, my wife's mind, we're going to leave the church because so-and-so beat us out this money. Mm -hmm. These other Christians. Because mm -hmm. if I had got mad and left, mm -hmm. I wouldn't be where I am today if I had allowed that other sheep to run me off. Uh -huh. Okay. Now, when it comes to a pastor, I, my pastor, I always said, was a good example before us. I, I see things that happen in the news, mm -hmm. see things that's going on with other sh pastors. Mm -hmm. So I can see people being disillusioned by a shepherd not doing the right thing or, or messing up. And um, I, I, just, I just wonder how I, if sitting in the pew, how I would respond. I guess it had to be the, the degree of what he did or what he was mm -hmm. accused of doing. Uh -huh. And if I had my kids there and, fat and small children there. so. Um, it's a hard call to stay somewhere when the leader mm -hmm. has fallen or the leader has done something. Mm -hmm. um, but if, if you know if a leader has done something or is doing something, and the sheep scatter, that's to be expected. Okay. Now, um, are they going to give the man or woman time enough to restore themselves? Was it an honest mistake? Was it a mistake in the sense that hey, they just they were just it, human? It depends on what happens. What, what happens? And sometimes, as the people in churches, the parishioners, maybe we have to realize too that. Pastors are human, and um, we. I was just having this conversation earlier, and we were talking about you know that pastors are humans. And my what I was saying from my perspective is, you understand that when you're in church for a while. Yeah. But somebody just coming exactly. to church, or somebody who's coming back from an experience where they were scarred, mm -hmm. they're looking at the pastor for everything. Yeah. And um, and the response was, you're supposed to study for yourself. Exactly. And my response was, but somebody coming to church, just coming to church, they're not going to do that. Right. And so, so my question was, as a pastor, what do you do for the people who aren't going to study for themselves, mm -hmm. but to try to prevent them from becoming so disillusioned yeah. that they leave? Because yeah. I feel like that's that's that fine line. That's where you got to mm -hmm. grab people. Well, number one, if pastors would be real and be 100 keep mm -hmm. it 100 traditionally pastors will give the impression or give the impression that they're flawless that they don't have some flaws they don't have every human walking on two legs legs have some cracks in their personality mm -hmm. in their mindset in their behavior because they're human mm -hmm. however um, we are supposed to grow into, if you're in that position, you're supposed to have been able to grow past that and, and work through it, mm -hmm. but still, still growing. Mm -hmm. um, this is one thing I tell my people when they're sitting in the pews. I say, look to your left mm -hmm. and look to your right. Look behind you. Tap the person in front of you. Now look up here. There's something wrong with all of us. Wow. There's something wrong with all of mm -hmm. us. So if a, if a pastor can admit that he may have it together in 90% of his life, but he got some other areas he's growing in mm -hmm. and not no, not no molestation, not no um, nothing sleeping with women, out and, there. And sleeping with women, stealing the money, right. nothing like that. And that stealing the money, yeah, that's, what, that's what you hear about the most. If you got safeguards, mm -hmm. 
the, the, the church is supposed to have safeguards. Number one, mm -hmm. you have, you're legally bound as a 501 to have certain procedures and policies in place mm -hmm. and record keeping. We have a CPA firm mm -hmm. and our CPA firm don't play mm -hmm. because they don't want to lose their license. Mm -hmm. And so if you have a good CPA, CPA firm that you know they hold you accountable, you got a deacon board that holds you accountable, that the money is, and then your heart's right. See, I, I didn't get in this for money. Mm -hmm. I was a businessman before I was a pastor. Mm -hmm. I had, I had um, private contracts, mm -hmm. I had my boys' homes. In, in the 80s, I was making six, figure in the, six figures in the 80s. So see, some pastors right. get into the ministry and start making money and start getting money and mm -hmm. seeing money they never had before, and it messes with them. Mm -hmm. I didn't get into, in it for the money. I came with money. I know how to make money, mm -hmm. and money don't make me or turn me on to it like that. Mm -hmm. I never had a problem since I was a little child. Mm -hmm. My first job, I was eight years old. I'm sweeping up the liquor store on the base sign <laughs> in Tijuana Street. Oh, wow. Mama ain't got no money for me. Mama uh -huh. can't get me no money. I got to get my own. Right. I was selling flower seeds, shells, uh, flower seeds where the ladies could put in their gardens. Mm -hmm. I was selling flower seeds. It's in my book to the neighbors. Right. I was, I'd get my bubble gum wrappers and, and get stuff and sell it to the kids. Mm -hmm. I became a newspaper boy. I was throwing papers in the sixth grade. So I was always working, hustling, getting mine. Mm -hmm. And so I, my, we have the Orange Show. You remember the Orange Show? Yeah, I remember the Orange Show. I would give my sister's money to go to the Orange Show. Because uh -huh. my mama couldn't give it to him. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying all that to say this. I've been making money. I know how to make money. I've been taking care of myself. I moved out the house when I was 16 and got my, my bachelor's, my master's, my, my doctorate, and, you know, taking care of, uh, of my family, my business. So money didn't, didn't blow my mind in mm -hmm. coming into a church setting. Mm -hmm. So some pastors ha haven't been used to that. You know, the most money they've seen and made when they became a pastor mm -hmm. or they, they make the churches, all that kind of stuff. So I, I didn't have that, that temptation or that problem. So if, if the pastor has some safeguards, one thing my pastor taught me, have some rules for yourself and some safeguards for yourself. Mm -hmm. And the Bible tells us, don't give, the, give Satan no place. Mm -hmm. I have safeguards with myself sexually, as far as my wife is concerned. Mm -hmm. The church know I love my wife, we, we were partners, mm -hmm. we're tight. Um, we have our married couples get away here in June, going to Palm Desert. I'm the mar marital specialist. Been married, you know, 47 years, okay. we have a couples get away. And so they see how I treat my wife. Mm -hmm. So I don't counsel no women by myself. Mm -hmm. I don't go to no women's houses. Safeguards. All that safeguards, safeguards. you know. And as far as the money concerned and all like that. If if the pastor is well rounded and secure within himself, mm -hmm. Satan don't really have much room to mm -hmm. tempt you or to, to mess with you in, in areas. Right. So some pastors, I don't know all their experiences, but mm -hmm. you know, when it comes to that money thing and and you know, I, I was driving Mercedes before I was a pastor. Mm -hmm. I don't have one now. I don't want one now. Mm -hmm. But I've had Mercedes. Before. So, you know, getting a big car, right. a big house. That, that wasn't your reason. You didn't yeah. come into this I, I, because you were trying to make money. Yeah, or finance. And, and I hear what you're saying, too. Not that a lot of people, pastors may not come into it, but some, they see something that they've never seen before. And it the kind of... It, attention. Attention. And, and it changes things. Yeah. Because money does have the propensity to do that. Yeah. But being that you already came from something, you already knew how to make something of yourself, that wasn't the right. thing that gave you the yes. motivation to proceed exactly. with this. Yeah. This is from get, your heart. Or get greedy once you know you see money. Once or, you or, see or, it. or get greedy. That, right. That, that, that right. same thing play with me on that. Right. And, and these things are because of your safeguard.